everybody, welcome back to Northern Land, place of Binding of Isaac Adderley. Plus, in the last episode, there was no tension. It was like X3, the last stand in this episode. Oh, <laughs> there will be some tension. We finally ran them to the Keeper again. I'm ready. X9ZTGYPY. GYPY, gotcha. Appreciate you. What do we need? Well, first off, we need to relax. I think I've got the relaxation part handled. I've already come to terms with the fact. We might lose the streak. And you know what? I'm okay with it. If, if this is my time, this is my time. But we're definitely gonna give it our all. We're gonna give it our honest, maximum effort. This is not training. This is the competition. This is where we want to focus. Static tiers, tech zero, is an extremely good get. You know, like, 10% of surviving uh, keeper runs is knowing what to do on rooms like that. <laughs> ah, crap. <laughs> on rooms with, like, automatic uh, damage, if you don't behave exactly perfectly, you gotta know where you're gonna go. So the battery, the battery does help, actually. Um, if we could afford that, that would be nice. So I'm just gonna... Uh, speaking of which, it would have been real nice to get... A charge to work for us there. I do want to say... We've had a lot of situations recently where we've had to fight the haunt for big plays. This was one of the easier ones. Um... You know, we've had to fight the haunt in a situation where we can't take damage numerous times recently. Even though there is a Tinted Rock, I really, really want to save our bomb, maybe, to see if we could possibly, possibly pick up the battery. It's not even like a 10 out of 10 uh, get for us, but it's definitely like a 6. So what I'm trying to do is get to a place where, realistically speaking, you know, if we could be at like 10 cents, then blowing up the donation machine could take us to 15 and allow us to purchase the battery. So every penny does matter here. We could get to 11 or more. You gotta try, right? You could get to 11 or more on a play with the space bar. Secret room, depending on where it is, could obviously hook you up. I think this is this is really for all the marbles right here. Not not for the whole run, but for the ability to pick up the battery. This is uh, this is an important moment for us. So um, shoot the fires. There is no donation machine, so actually we should definitely stop sweating it. <laughs> Just take this instead. That's fine. We have enough money to get our uh, donation machine, our uh, arcade, sorry, on the next floor. Um, though that might not be seen as super mission critical. Two of spades. Eh, pretty, pretty poor return on our investment there, but anyway, we're headed downwards. We really can't be mad about getting static tiers. Like, that's a really, really good get. You saw how fast it let us kill the haunt. Now, that's a haunt with lower HP than normal, but still. You know, he's no slouch in the damage department. I feel good. Yeah, I, I really think, you know, step one is just relax. Once you got the relaxation part out of the way, you recognize, you know, we don't control everything. I'm not trying to be, like, overly philosophical here. We don't control everything on an, on an Isaac run. <laughs> a little closer comfort there. We control some of the things on an Isaac run. And we influence things for sure by not only our choices, but our performance. But apart from that, you know, sometimes you're just going to walk into a situation that's untenable. And uh, it's going to be hard or perhaps even impossible to make it out of it without taking damage. And sometimes you walk into a situation where you're like, this is tough, but we're going to make it work. That's all we can hope for. And that's all we can hope for in life. No, I'm just messing with you. <laughs> like I said, I'm not making it overly philosophical. Just exactly as philosophical as is necessary. This is a great room. 
I love this room when we get a, a setup like this. No spiders. Now, in case you need a refresh. Eh. Do we care about um, a deal with the devil? We care about a deal with the devil insofar as getting a deal with the devil fast tracks our ability to get a deal with the angel. Deal with the devil, you know, there are some. Sure, why not? There are some that we wouldn't mind, um, and there are some that we would we would actually like a great deal, I think. Wow, I got lucky there. Um, like, nine lives, I do think... It's not a slam dunk, necessarily, but I do think most of the time it's probably good enough to take. Um, but that's just an example, you know? It, it's worth thinking about. We just got the ability to fly as well, which is really nice. And, uh, Diplopia. Okay, now... Now we got a, a very interesting situation coming for us. If we get a deal with the devil, having Diplopia would be super nice. I think it's worth the risk. All we have to do is not get hit twice. And I know I'm setting myself up for comedic timing here. I would rather not. But 15 cents for a couple of free items, probably on average, is pretty good. So I think step one, you just take care of the little minions. I can't believe you're not dead yet. Step two, you can finally start hitting Monstro. This could be a huge swing for us. Keep in mind, we absolutely 100% have to use the Plopia. Uh, on this floor at some point. If not on the deal with the devil, then we want to duplicate the boss item. Or maybe duplicate everything else in the shop. But we definitely need to take the wooden nickel with us. This is not a save play. So we don't dislike that necessarily. Let's see. I just wanted to see if maybe there was a Krampus in here. So we got a free Incubus, which is, I mean, and a free multi-dimensional baby, of course. The free Incubus is huge. Huge. Nice little tears upgrade. Still not feeling 100% confident, you know? Obviously, we would love to get uh, a little bit more defensively minded items, but for now, I mean, I gotta check the second secret room here. Nope, okay. You know what? I'll try here. Just looking for the ultimate trinket. Um, we're lacking anything that makes wooden nickel better, but the run has gotten... It's gone from, like, whatever you would peg the keeper at to start with. So, I don't know, maybe, like, a like a 3 out of 10 to, like, a 7. Which is, I mean, you know, it's a huge proportional increase. It's not to say there aren't things we'd still, you know, want to see. Like, you know, we've had a nice little... Damage imp or uh, tears improvement, but a, a raw damage stat improvement would also be pretty sick. Um, but you know, it's a uh, it's a situation where it would be pretty ignorant to complain. You know, you're still alive up there. How? Thank you, thank you. Because, like, statistically speaking, this run is is unbelievably good compared to where you'd normally expect it to be. Probably should have saved the bomb. I didn't really think about it until after I'd already placed it, but we have, you know, way more keys than bombs. Hmm. The D20, I think is an okay reroll on this room, and that's, I mean... I'm not gonna say we got a great return on our investment there, necessarily, but... It's better than you would expect from a normal D20 roll. The potential energy there was high. The actual realized gain, pretty low. Dude, I gotta say, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good here. You know, this is the... For me, this is the ideal way to, like, approach a random streak. You know, I want, like, 8 or 10 runs. I don't think we're gonna need the smelter for the key right now. I think we're okay right here. <laughs> Tough choices. I'd like, like, 8 or 10 runs that are just normal Isaac, and then every once in a while, one run that's like, we're really messing with it. You know, we, we really gotta keep our head on straight here. So keep in mind, the other thing I didn't really mention here, I know we're talking a lot about Isaac, that's, that's typical for a keeper run, but um, the thing I didn't really mention here is, uh, we still have deal with the angel chances. 
That's the first kind of like whiff there. We still have deal with the angel chances as a result of the fact that we didn't pay HP for our deal with the devil. So effectively, I mean, we're uh, pretty much doing the exact like st strategic kind of style that I wanted to do. We've been lucky that it worked out so nicely for us. Damage, please. Aquarius. Now I, I'm, I'm getting a little complainy. I, I don't mean for it to sound like complaints. It's rather just... Uh, I don't think we should. It's rather just uh, things we could use. Speed upgrades. Not a huge deal if we don't get it. We can fly. We got maneuverability. And 0 0.85 speed is not bad to begin with. But it could be better. You know, even even like 1, 1.15, feel good. Anyway. I came into this uh, anecdote rich. You know, we finished the previous episode talking about how I think that my generation was maybe a little bit coddled. And it's frustrating to admit it because it means that the boomers are right, but for the wrong reasons. <laughs> We're going to have to save that uh, for a different day. Because for now, we got to focus on Isaac. All I'm saying is I did get a lot of participation trophies growing up. Bad trip. Why did I take a pill? Why did I take a pill, dude? I briefly forgot we could fly. There we go, we're back. <laughs> anyway, we did, sorry, I was about to actually go off on the, you know, continue that joke. Then things got scary for a moment. But, um, you know, I, I played in a softball league with six teams. You know how many trophies I have that say runner-up? And you're like, that's pretty good. You came second every year? Nah, we came sixth almost every year. But we were still runners-up. We were just, we, we were runners up to the fifth team, who were also known, say it with me if you grew up in the same generation, as the C Division Champions. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think there's anything wrong with the participation trophy necessarily. But it didn't, even as a kid, maybe, I think... You gotta be careful with what you say here, because it sounds like, I think we give kids too much positive reinforcement. That's not really my opinion. But, like, as a kid, when I got the C Division runner-up trophy year after year, I never thought to myself, you know, wow, we're the runners-up. No, I was like, we came sixth. I didn't really talk about it with anybody else on my team. I don't know if the other kids were like, ooh, second place. In the, in the third division of the two worst teams, you know? But uh, as a kid, I knew. I knew what, what C division runner-up meant. It wasn't... The, the trophy itself just seemed modestly patronizing, you know? I was like, we were only getting this trophy because our parents paid, you know, 140 bucks to the league when we signed up to cover the cost of engraving. I would rather have had one extra pizza party than the trophy, for sure, even to this day. I, don't, I haven't asked my parents how they feel about it. Maybe they're like, oh, look at this. We've got a, a row of trophies. And that's the thing, like the participation trophies, they aren't really, you know, for the, for the kid, are they? They're for the parents. So the parents don't have to deal with a kid who's uh, upset, but... Or maybe, I don't know. My my very brief history in minor, you know, youth sports told me that really it was the parents who got upset more than anything else. Which is weird, because whenever I saw like an angry parent at softball, it's just a very strange vibe. You're like, it's A, is softball. No one in this community is going pro in softball. I don't mean to insult softball. I mean, I played it. 
Don't be offended on softball's behalf, but like, can you even go pro in softball as a man? Like, I know that there are professional women's softball leagues. It's not a sport for women, it's a sport for everyone. But, you know, for some reason, you know, baseball, hardball, has like a huge men's league, obviously, the MLB, but softball is just kind of like, eh. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there is a, a men's softball league. And secondarily, I was like, dude, we're in rural Canada. <laughs> Isn't exactly a hotbed, you know, when you, when you think of, uh, you know, softball powerhouses. You're like, ah, that town I can't pronounce the name of in Ontario. Anyway, this, this run's getting a little touchy here, okay? Now, when hockey parents got mad, I was like, I sort of get it. You're like, if your kid's the best team, or if your kid is the best player on his team, there's a chance that when they move up, they're going to be the best player on their next team. And then when they age up, they might be the best player on their next team. And if they do that one or two more times, they might have a chance to get drafted in the sixth round of the NHL draft. And that's no joke. That's, uh, you know... You could have a career as a pro hockey player at that point. But for softball, I'm like, come on. <laughs> the coach is like someone's dad. It isn't, uh, you know, Ricky Henderson's not out here teaching us how to steal bases. It's like, you know, a, a journeyman electrician. It's not a disrespect to the field of electrician-y. Electris, electricianist. It's just like, you know. You, you weren't pro, dude. You're not Jenny Finch. It's just for fun. Just, just relax a little bit. You think we want to be spending it? We'd rather be inside playing PlayStation. You're, you're taking us out here on a Saturday to play, you know, four hours of the most boring sport in the hot summer sun. You're going to get mad when your kid, you know, drops a... Ground ball or something like that? Get over it. It's for, it's for leisure. <laughs> I was going to say it's for fitness, but then I remembered that a lot of the kids on my team, instead of bringing like a water bottle, they brought two liters of Pepsi every time. Um, where did that come from? Why am I picking up the coins? Stop picking up the coins. This is a war of attrition. Great work. No deal. I don't think we want bone hearts. In fact, I think that scares the crap out of me. I don't know. I might regret that. Maybe maybe it would have given us bone tears as well, but I whenever you're dealing with special case HP situations, I was like, dude, we could we could be killed there. So I, I'm just happy we got uh, we got a tears upgrade. I think that's a okay. What a strange run. <laughs> It's strange, almost, yikes, in how typical it is, as far as keeper runs go, you know? We don't have any of the, uh, the run-winning keeper items that e even still don't guarantee you will win, but just make it more likely. And we're actually not even really asking for, you know, like a nun's habit or whatever. Mostly, um, I really want a little bit of extra speed. I wouldn't mind a little bit of extra damage. I think um, speed is more relevant for now. I'm glad I took 25 tries to get into that room just to find out it was a slap in the face in the first place. Appreciate the luck upgrades. We're finally back to baseline luck. Dude, this is actually, that might be the most important thing that's happened to us in like two floors, okay? What do I mean by that? Well, by fighting greed in the secret room, we know the shop will not contain greed. We got a ton of cash. I'm very eager to purchase, you know. We have 9 volt, we have jumper cables. Nun's habit is extremely good if we could get that, but really I'm I'll buy anything. Anything that'll give us the uh you know, any advantage permanently, temporarily, etc, etc. Piggy bank is another not necessarily game winner, but but pretty close. So I am I'm extremely stoked. 
piggy bank was... I mean, it's up there. Let's do it. We also have Justice is kind of like a, a little bit of a get out of jail free card if we get hit. The problem, this is gonna sound, you wanna talk about uh, be feeling entitled. Oh, we can make coins, but we gotta pick them up. It's a complicated task. That's not guaranteed to pick up the coins as they fall before you can get hit again. So I'm not, I'm not taking anything for granted right now. <laughs> I'll tell you, I'd love to get this deal with the Devil Slash Angel. It does, you know, it's a it's a real skill to get a deal with the Devil or Angel as the Keeper. Because you basically just, like, literally can't be hit on the entire floor. Or you gotta beat the odds pretty considerably. You know what I would love more than anything else is just a respawn. Actually, you know what I would love more than anything else? Holy Mantle. You know what I would love after that? A respawn. We have Infamy. I don't know. In it's possible without me even noticing. Infamy has already, like, saved us on this run. It's not an XL floor. Good dodge. Where is he? Oh, I, di I didn't even see him. Yara. Well, um, you could always Yara the Justice. The problem is, Yara doesn't do much for us until the chest. And generally speaking, you know, I think as the keeper, item quantity uh, matters a lot less than item quality. And that's, to, to a modest extent, probably true for every character, but it's like really true for the keeper. So I don't think we need to prioritize the Yara. No! How? I was against the wall. That's totally my bad. I feel horrible about that. But on the bright side, we got a speed upgrade, so I don't feel as bad anymore. Okay. <laughs> well, you can't deny there's a certain electricity in the air right now. Um, certainly the hardest part of the game is yet to come. But for now, I mean, this is one where you pretty much, sometimes you thank the seed, sometimes you thank yourself, and sometimes you thank, you know, whatever deity you, you choose to believe in, if you believe in one. This is one of the ones where we thank the seed, without a doubt. <laughs> Bit scary, but, oh, dude. It's useless, but temporarily I was really stoked. It's not useless. It's unlikely to be useful. What I mean to say with that strange uh, little aside there was like, you know, I, I don't have much control over this run right now. You know, I, I mean, I, I have literal control over it, but I don't... I, it's not me that's determining whether or not we win or lose. It's basically been the seed giving us incredibly solid items that, that's really weighted things heavily in my favor right now. And I'm very appreciative. I'm extremely appreciative of it. That has not always been the case. <laughs> We've had a lot of real touchy keeper runs that have, you know, basically killed us automatically. Uh, not automatically, but the, the writing was on the wall for a long time. And you gotta admit, you start to get the little, the little stomach tingle, you know? A little, a little excitement. You're like, ah, you know, a win as the Keeper means something. It means more than a win as basically any other character in the game. But it means way more when you're preserving a double-digit streak. And even though that's minor, you know, it's a low, uh... It's a low number in the whole scheme of things. It means something here. Run. And continue running and then stop running. Okay, I think we got you. <laughs> Come on, 36% chance. Oh, thank you. Infamy protected our chance and it actually, I mean, it didn't turn out that well, but I'll take Guardian Angel nonetheless. Oh. Okay, you gotta be careful. Stretch out a little. Whew. Starting to let the... 
let the moment hit me a little bit here. You gotta remember, this moment, for me, has got some gravitas. We have been in, like, a slump. Probably not the worst slump we've ever experienced. But, like, the worst slump we've experienced for, like, a couple of years. <laughs> so, to be, uh, you know, on the precipice of, of not greatness, but of, of just... I don't want to describe it as competence. That's kind of underselling the moment a little bit, but... To get back to a standard, or at least have the chance to get back to a standard that was previously, uh, you know, part of my self-esteem. It's worth quite a lot. And really, I do think the numbers are working out in our favor right now. The main thing to do is make sure you're pressing the space bar. Um, you're going to get the opportunity, especially on, you know, long rooms, you're going to get the opportunity to press it many times. The higher number of, of coin flips, the more you're going to get the result you want. So definitely make sure you're doing that. And don't forget, if you find yourself in a panic, you have this justice card. You got to work with it. It's not a guaranteed survival, but it, it helps. More than that did, for sure. This is the scary room. <laughs> We're super lucky we've got, like... Really, it's Static Tears and Continuum that counter that room, so... You know, even still, it's been a little spooky, but it's way less spooky than it could be. Way less spooky than it has been on a lot of runs. Yikes, that was extremely close. How big is this floor, dude? Okay, we chose wisely a couple times in a row. That's when you start to think, like, we were chosen. We were chosen on this run. Okay, so I almost... broke the cardinal rule. What's the cardinal rule? Hit the space bar. I also, I picked up the coin. I am, You can go back and watch the game tape on that one. As far as I'm concerned, if we didn't pick up the coin, we were going to get hit, and then we were going to have to pick up the coin. The only safe place my brain found to dodge was the exact position the coin occupied. I don't relish the thought of, you know, taking away our HP, but you got to do what you got to do. Lock up? Nope. Okay. Okay. One more floor. It's the hardest of all floors. Decent. Potentially very good. Not so much with the range increase, but I think we will take uh, Odd Mushroom. It, it raised our fire rate to an unbelievable degree. There's a slight risk because it does lower your damage, but it lowered our... It, like, tripled our rate of fire. It lowered our damage by, like, 15%. Or less, by switching to Geico. Look, every episode's got to have a joke in it. Even if we're playing as the Keeper. So I love this room. Nobody could possibly hurt us. Every 10 seconds we get another coin. Another chance to get a coin, at least. Bit dangerous. Not one of the most dangerous rooms on the floor, but, you know... Definitely a room where bad things can happen. This also shouldn't be too bad. I know I'm tempting fate to some extent. Definitely do not care at all about lard. <laughs> I'm just like... Very much hoping... That I'm either... it. You know what? I guess when it comes down to it, you could hope for one of two things. You could hope you don't get the hard rooms, or you could hope that you, when the hard room presents itself, you've got the strength necessary to persevere. Rather than wishing for avoidance, I'm going to wish for competence. Oh man, it's, this is an echo of our first fight. 
And I think we're a little bit better equipped now. That's alright. I, I didn't even want extra items anyway. Like, as far as I'm concerned, if you get items in the chest, you're a coward. I play pure, straight-edge Isaac with 100% focus at all times. I demand perfection. And so does my audience. Well, at this point, might as well grab one of those. We gotta be close. Like... Mm -hmm. So we could take Brother Bobby and Lard. Is Brother Bobby worth a speed downgrade? Um, you don't need me to answer that question. If you need me to answer that question, you have not done the required reading for this course. It says very clearly on the uh, course registration that there's a prerequisite for this, which is having watched at least uh, 50 episodes of The Binding of Isaac. Or getting special written permission from the professor as an exception. Wow, okay, so in hindsight, I uh, should have prayed for uh, avoidance because we did not fight any of the tough rooms at all here. Now, this does not mean we have guaranteed victory, but it helps. Just as long as I can keep him away, we got no problems. Dude, that was like the safest keeper run I've ever had. I feel so good. We're on 16 wins in a row, having just one as the keeper. For now, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. Helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. I will see you next time. See ya!